No one's gonna know who I am, it's okay. Um, and give you a brief, real quick, a brief overview of what the study is, um, what's included in the study. So the Beachfront Improvement Feasibility Study is a study that will look at potential improvements to the Junior Seau Beach Community Center, Banshell and Amphitheater in the Pier Plaza. Included in the study is looking at the existing conditions of those facilities, as well as potential uh, site improvements and constraints, as well as soliciting public input, which leads us to tonight. Tonight, we have a brief presentation, which we'd follow with public comment. Some of the items we do want to clarify in our presentation, and I will start off right now. I do want to clarify um, there have been no plans to demolish these facilities and replace them with a parking structure. So just want to start off the meeting with that clarification. And uh, again, and I do want to apologize. I'm not sure where that misinformation came, but there have been, you know, again, no plans for that. But we do appreciate you coming tonight because we do want to hear from you. This is a long process. We have several public outreach meetings planned. Um, we have allocated two hours tonight for our public outreach meeting. Um, for those that are here, we appreciate your attendance. We also have those that are on Zoom. Again, uh, for those that would like to comment on Zoom, please make sure you raised your hand. Um, we do have public comment cards for, for those that would like to fill any of those out. We are going to be taking all of those comment cards and looking at all of the feedback we get. Um, if there are any questions that are brought up during your public comment, please note we are going to track all of those questions. If we can answer them at the end of this presentation, we will be doing so. If not, please know we do have a specific section on the website for this study. Um, you can find that link on the main page uh, and we will be posting the information for those questions on that, on that page. Uh, additionally, this is a Zoom meeting, so we do have this presentation recorded and that will also be put on there as well. Um, for those that do, um, need it we have uh, translation services available so please let victor know he's in the back of the room um, we can coordinate with him so we can provide those services again we thank you for your time i also i believe i saw the mayor i want to thank honorable mayor sanchez for attendance tonight thank you thank you and with that i will introduce our our consultant steve Johnson, and I'll let you take over. Thank you. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> I'm Steve Johnson. I'm a principal of Johnson Favreau. We're a 13-person architecture firm in the city of Culver City. So yes, I'm a new face. I'm not from Oceanside. But I have to assure you, it's a privilege for us, this small firm, to be working with you on this study. Um, this is something Jim Favreau and I have devoted our entire professional life to, which is work in the public sector, municipalities like you, school districts, community college districts. And we do that because, A, we love the community-driven design and planning process. It's something we love. And we do that. We love that because it's, we feel that's where architecture design matters most, the public places where people gather and the places that do build community. So we're honored to be a part of this process. We're not going away. I'm not a business development principal. I'm hands-on architect that enjoys and loves architecture and enjoys this process. So this is the first of many times uh, that you will see me. I do have a short presentation tonight. And then as Dara said, we'll be followed by public comment. So as Dara said, the purpose tonight is really clarify any misunderstandings that are out there about the study. And really what is most important is to hear from you about what is important to the community about these facilities, what works. We do wanna hear from you what works and what does not work at these facilities. And we also wanna hear from you, what are your goals for the feasibility study that we're engaged in? So just to get everybody familiar with the site that you know well, but look, we're gonna begin looking at it in this process in different ways. This is an aerial view looking from the Southwest, North Pacific sort of diagonal across the top of the page that forms the Eastern boundary of the, the study site. The West is the strand, Betty's lot to the South is the Southern boundary of the study site and to the North is the community center and parking lot, I'm sorry, with the uh, amphitheater and the soon to be completed Beach Operations Center sort of right in the middle of the study site. 
So the reason for the study, these buildings, they're aging facilities. The amphitheater was built in 1937. The community center is in 1955. All buildings need repair. All buildings need to essentially be restored in some way. And so it's important as you move forward with these buildings to understand what that may mean. And especially with regard to understanding what are the, co the code implications for bringing a building to meet the important building codes. One of the important ones being accessible design for the disabled. And the other thing is really the most important thing in some ways is what are the opportunities for us with these improvements to enhance the existing function, use, and utility of these buildings for you, therefore your neighborhood, for your community. And so that really is what this is about. It is that opportunity. So first, just to start with the amphitheater, we know that this is a beloved site for many of the most important cultural celebrations and festivals in this community. These festivals, the week-long Samoan cultural celebration, the Filipino cultural celebration, the Juneteenth celebration and jazz festival, these are indeed important places where your community gathers. They are expressions of pride. They are community building in and of themselves. And so that is first and foremost why these facilities are crucial and embedded in the lifeblood of this community. And we do know that. I think a goal of this study is understanding how do we better accommodate these? Indeed, how do we make them more accessible and ensure access for the life of these facilities to everyone in the community? Small nonprofits and other organizations that don't necessarily have the dollars to operate here, that is the goal to maintain this as an important venue in the community. The community center, any architect will tell you programming drives everything. In other words, our understanding of existing programming and how that may be able to be enhanced and improved upon how it, we make it and make sure that it's multi-generational and that it's flexible. That's the hallmark of any good recreation and community center. We know, for example, that a variety of important camps, uh, beach camps take place there. Essentially basketball and beach, dodgeball and beach. These are important things that do exist as this facility and we need to understand how can they best operate here. Certainly basketball, volleyball, pickleball is an opportunity, dodgeball within that. How do we make sure that this facility continues to accommodate those going forward? And how do we also indeed bring and make sure all of the kinds of things that are offered at other facilities citywide and at this facility stay here and are optimized, such as cheerleading, dance, ballet, hip hop, uh, belly dancing, the martial arts, these are all the important community recreation programming that makes this facility alive and serve this neighborhood and this community. And we can't forget that this is also a place just to be and to meet, particularly for young people, particularly for teenagers. So how this facility supports after school programs, the, the crucial mentoring programs that are in this community where again, building of community where basically starting with our youth, understanding how and where they hang out and how we preserve that as we go forward is crucial to the operation of these facilities. And even looking forward to things that may not even be there, may not even be interest to you, but e-gaming for teenagers is an important thing that is kind of happening in new community centers and recreation centers. So we know that this community center is a place of celebration. That happens to be, I think, a Christmas a uh, celebration a few years back, certainly town halls, charity events, annual events take place here. It is a place where you meet each other, where you renew your ties through all kinds of events. It's crucial to the lifeblood of this uh, community and city. So our initial assumptions going into this to be confirmed by your input to us is that the amphitheater and Bancho certainly are an incredibly valuable cultural resource in this city. They are a significant part of your history and have a significant connection to many generations before you and to come. And that's a given with this project. Um, and so we are going to be maintaining the functions of these existing facilities, the amphitheater, as well as the community center. That's never going to go away. That is not the task in this. So I wanna reiterate something Dara said. We are not tearing down any facilities for parking lots. <laughs> that is simply not a goal. It's not been proposed. It's not been discussed. It's not been mentioned. It is not happening. 
That is not the purpose. We don't take community resources like this and turn them into parking structures. So I wanna be super clear, it's never been mentioned. It's not happening. It's not something we're interested in, that's for sure. Um, we are not going to construct areas or facilities on any portions of these existing sites that are not connected to the direct function and operations that are already on these sites. It's a community center and an amphitheater. <laughs> No other functions are sneaking their way into these sites. And that gets to the third thing. You live here at the beach for a very important reason. It's about the open space. This is a public park, essentially. This is parkland. This is open space and vista where one sees the beach and appreciates all of that. The idea that it's gonna be filled with facilities is not a goal because it's important as, as open space to this community. So in, it, Basically, to summarize, our goal with this study with you is to maintain, improve, and expand the existing recreation programming for the neighborhood at this site. It is a neighborhood for facility, first and foremost. We do know that there's a basketball courts deficit in the city of Oceanside. My strong opinion is basketball courts should not leave this site. It makes no sense to have to drive when one can walk to your neighborhood facility. So basketball courts should not leave this site. Court space and programming of courts is, is essential to the development of youth, the development of youth sports programs, which develop elite athletes from your community and have for generations. And so this is the first step, participating in these community centers and participating in these programs builds these elite athletes that you're so proud of. Um, and, and indeed, we need to retain and expand. I don't wanna miss the fact that there's a meeting function, there's a gathering function. So we will be retaining and expanding the space for community events and community meetings. The amphitheater, it goes without saying, as I said, it's a hub for the community events and fantastic celebrations that you hold there. I mean, this is the place in the community to meet, to see your neighbors, to join with them, to celebrate, to celebrate art, music, dance, culture, food, all of the things that are brought to bear in this community that unites this community. It's also an incredible outdoor music and theater venue. It's probably one of the most amazing locations in the United States. I mean, who could look for a, a location with that vista looking out at the pier and at the Pacific Ocean? So it's, it's stunning. And we do know, as I've said many times, when it's not used for events, it is valuable open space for the community. Many people just exercise on those stadium steps. It's just a way to complete some of your fitness. So it's an open space opportunity that will be maintained within this uh, product. So what have we been doing all this time? You know, I haven't been in a back room smoking cigars, making deals with people. What I have been doing and my team We've been documenting the existing conditions, doing the plans, the site plans, the all of the things that are the tools for engaging in a planning process. So we've been completing that work. And we have met with city staff who kind of has firsthand knowledge, at least some knowledge about the challenges and opportunities associated with the existing facilities and their operations. What we have not done, no options have been developed. No proposals for any part of the site have been developed or presented. I haven't done them, so we have not done them. Um, many options will flow into the next phase. You will be overwhelmed with options. And it's for you to tell me what you like of those options in the succeeding phase. That's the point. Paper is cheap. Creativity is what we should have in this process together. All we ask is you'd have an open mind with us as we go through it. And you're gonna be in the driver's seat to tell us what works for this community and what does not. Um, so reiterating, no options or proposals have been developed, we're at the beginning. With that in mind, we've divided this process into three phases, essentially the discovery phase and public outreach phase, which is ongoing where we are right today. And as I've said many times, we've been documenting existing conditions, starting our public outreach with you reviewing existing programming so that we have a good foothold, essentially a foundation for beginning to study options with you. That's followed up by the option development phase at the, through the end of this year, through the first part of next year. 
We will get into more detail about the programming opportunities, the community recreation, the event programming, understand what is actually holding back, what's restricting access to the amphitheater, what's, what's a challenge to the various festivals and celebrations. Can you afford to pay for security and then closing the festival? I mean, these are the, all of the things, both operational and physical, that will improve your access to these facilities as a part of this study. We will be developing options, as Dara said, for repair and restoration and understanding what we can do with the issues that we face. And we're going to tie to that construction costs and operating costs so that you together can, with your political leadership, can decide what fits you, what works, what can you afford to do, what's the right thing to do. And then finally, in the final document phase, we will put that together into a report, both digital and hard copy for everyone to read that records both the process and the findings after this lengthy process and an implementation roadmap. And here's where I wanna be super clear. We're not, we're not designing anything with you. This is a framework for decision-making to come. Design has many, many steps. So this is just setting a framework. We're not. What's not growing out of this is some de grand design project. It's really a framework for decision-making going forward. Take a minute to just describe, we did develop a robust public outreach schedule. The meetings that you see up on the top are kind of a series of meetings that will happen throughout the project and will evolve as the study evolves. They are with, as I mentioned, city staff, but we will also be meeting obviously with senior city leadership, but also the key regulatory agencies that have a say in how we move forward, planning, police and fire, for example, um, the building department, all of these, these key regulatory agencies in a city that have a stake in the outcome and have information for us to know. But I wanna focus really on the community meeting. So here we are tonight, community meeting one. Um, thank you for coming, a huge turnout, love it, keep coming. <laughs> Um, it will be followed by focused meetings. We've said it we're to be scheduled are two focus meetings. The first, these are gonna be based on the programming that we've talked about. So we can drill a little bit more deeply with you. I'm very general tonight, but we can drill more deeply with you about the community recreation and programming that's important to you at the community center and on the site for that matter. And then the second focus meeting is really about the events, both the cultural and community and special events. We wanna hear from you. So we're dedicating two special topic meetings where we can focus on those with you, just like this meeting, hear from you and move forward with that information. You have a well-established committee and commission structure. We are making use of that. We are reporting to all of them and these are all public meetings that all of you can come and provide input. I would add, and, and, and again, I go back to that, Parks and Rec, certainly <laughs> key jurisdiction for this project is someone that we will be going to as we can go through the end of this discovery phase. I do wanna point out, we, we did have an advisory committee meeting, but we heard you. That committee was essentially uh, representatives from the various commissions and we heard you, why don't you just go to the commissions? And I think that was a good recommendation. Let's just get, let's just be clear and direct about who we go to. So we're not contemplating having any more of those meetings. Our plan, as you see here, is to go to the commissions that you have set up that are already in place that have jurisdiction over this project and present to those. So just wanted to let you know of that development. So just in this phase, we have 10 public meetings. 10 meetings before we get out of the month of October into early November, followed by essentially the option development phase where we essentially have another community meeting like this and as well go through and present to all of the committees and commissions all again as well. So when we finish these two phases, there will be a total of 19 public meetings for you to attend and provide your input in this evolving project and it will evolve. There will be more to talk about. There will be more to comment on. There will be more to weigh in on as we go forward in the process. <clears throat> and then finally, in the final document phase, back again for another community meeting like this, and then a presentation to your city council with regard to the findings of the process. So a total of 21 meetings, we're here. So we've got 20 of these to go. So I really look forward to it. I'm gonna to get to know you very well in this process. I don't leave, I don't go anywhere, I love this. And we're gonna be 
we're going to we're going to have a good time together. This is going to be something that's important to us as it is important to you. So with that, I thank you for your patience and in, in hearing me out on this and we're going to turn to the public comment. You, I, we want to hear everything you have to say, but would maybe possibly suggest again remind you, we would like to know what is most important for us to know from you about these sites. That's a, that's a key question. What works and what can be improved at these facilities? Let us know that. Let's get into the meat of this. Tell me what works, tell me what doesn't work, or tell me it all works just fine, that's fine too. And what should be our goals? I should say, what are your goals for the feasibility study? So if you'd like to frame your comments that way or tell us anything you like, I really do look forward to hearing it. I have. Sarah Grace and Kevin Nicholson from my office who will be helping throughout this process. They're joining me here tonight as well. So thank you again for the opportunity and look forward to hearing from you. Hello, everybody. Welcome. I'm going to start calling the public speakers um, down to the podiums. We have two podiums here. So if you can start lining up, uh, your name will appear on the screen up here. Um, for those of you who are on Zoom, please raise your hand now if you uh, would like to speak. We're going to do the in-person people first, and then we're going to move over to Zoom. So the first speaker is Samuel Palmel, followed by Fernando Juarez, followed by Robert Espinosa, and then followed by Dirk Akima. Come on down. Good evening. Um, tonight, uh, you know, basically coming to the meeting, really didn't know what to expect, basically. It was, uh, thank you very much for the planning committee. I'm kind of pointing out the, uh, the, the specifics as far as where we're at right now on this uh, venture. Um, I think after listening to everything, you pretty much answered, um, you know, I think most of the, I can answer for myself that the main concern is, is that um, it, it's, it's clear that the facilities need to be upgraded, but the main thing objective, I think I can speak for a lot of the native born ocean siders is, is that the facilities continue to host um, the events that it's historical for. Um, our, on our sports programs, our youth, also, um, you know, on the cultural events, um, there's also one that I didn't see, and that's the one that has to do with the with uh, the Oceanside graduation. Um, most of our programs um, uh, with Oceanside, I can speak for, for myself being a native Oceansider. I thought it was, it was important for me to come and voice, you know, a voice from uh, someone who was born and raised in Oceanside. On the Samoan community, I'm probably one of the first uh, wave of Samoans ever born here. So I can take it back quite a bit, but I can tell you that when I first heard about this, I says, well, that's nothing because this facility goes way back. You know, so I, I see how we fit in and how we joined the Oceanside community, but we also understand by growing up here that this site has a, a big significance for the history of Oceanside. So I come before you just to remind you, like I said before, you've answered a lot of uh, the concerns, which basically I come before you to kind of give you how, in, uh, you know, a sense of the urgency and importance of, uh, of this particular site. Because as we see the growth that's going on in Oceanside right now. Our concern as native Oceansiders is, is that Oceanside to us, as some of us is like it's slowly disappearing, the Oceanside that we knew. But that's uh, illogical because a lot of these facilities and buildings have are gotten old. But uh, we're now at the point where we see just growth returning into a tourist um, you know, a site, which basically long story short, um, this is one of the last historical sites that uh, the way I look at it is, we have to stand as a community to protect this one. When all the renovations started, the first thing I said is, this looks like the Santa, it's gonna be the Santa Monica of LA. But when I say that, it's because as tourists flooded here, these buildings that are up now are just the beginning of what may go out of control. That's our fear. Because what happens is when I say it's a Santa Monica of LA, of San Diego, is because Santa Monica Beach up there is everybody's beach. The reason why is if we go south from here to San Diego, 
not everybody's gonna be able to go there on vacation because the price goes up. So guess who gets the flow? We do. So this is our concern is that when is enough gonna be enough? So the biggest thing for us right now is to protect the heart of Oceanside. And the heart of Oceanside right so is named after um, a native ocean cider who basically, you know, hit uh, a level. Like I said, even though Junior has his name on the site, he represents all Oceanside. We've a, we have a long history. So he represents that. If he was here today, I'm sure he would say something very close. So we realized that really it's nice and it's sentimental. It's a selfish thing out of my side to say, yeah, you know, it's Junior's. A complex, but it's bigger than that. It's about everybody who ever grew up and lived in Oceanside, and that's what Junior represented. So, um, with that being said, I'd say that you covered everything I needed. You know, my concerns at this point, it's going to be just a matter of holding you to that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, thank you very much for the time. Uh, the next speaker is Fernando Juarez, followed by Robert Espinosa, followed by Dirk Akima. If I could get everybody to start lining up, we do have a lot of speakers. Um, also, there's a two-minute time limit. I'll be timing you. You can see on the podium the green light, yellow light, red light. Uh, when you see the yellow light, uh, you should start wrapping up. Red light means you're done. So, uh, Fernando Juarez. Fernando? Robert Espinoza. Oh, he's coming? Okay. Robert Espinoza. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Right here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. My name is Robert Espinosa. I belong to SOS Safer Streets. And um, you know, we need we need a, the, the Junior Seattle Community Center. We need more more safe places for the children, and so so they can socialize. Especially now the coronavirus is hopefully gone, but it, I don't know. But still, we need to have everybody half of this room probably graduated from the band shell. So we need to get, that's the Oceanside Archons, Banshell and Junior Seau. Thank you. And Junior Seau put Oceanside on the map. Nobody knew who Oceanside was at. And now you, got, now you guys want to put Junior Seau Community Center, sweep it under the rug? He's an icon for Oceanside. You know, respect him because he, he's from Oceanside. And like I said, we need more, more, more parks because Bilba Bishop Park is too far for the underprivileged kids over here by the beach. There's a lot of underprivileged kids that need programs that we're missing out on. And like I was watching this, this presentation, a lot of these kids won't be, they'll probably be graduating from the bench hill by the time they, they, they fix the community, the community center. Um, and that's what I have to say. I just need to have more socializing for the children and be safe place so they can, you know, grow up, grow up in Oceanside. And also Oceanside is a, it's always been to me, it's been that Oceanside, surfer quaint town. And all of a sudden we're trying to make it into a metropolis. Let's keep the Oceanside, you know, surfing available for us, you know? Thank you very much. And you guys, thanks for showing up everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Fernando Juarez. Okay, so we're gonna move to uh, Dirk Akima, followed by Steve Mayshu, followed by Arlene Hammerschmidt. If I can get you to start lining up, that'd be great. Thank you. Uh -huh. My name's Steve Mashu. I'm switching with Dirk, who's sitting here and standing here next to me. Um, we just wanted to get uh, an idea put on the floor as for consideration in, in your future designs. When I came to uh, Oceanside in the early 90s, there were volleyball courts all the way up and down the coastline. Lots of sand, lots of volleyball. 
Um, but as we've lost sand, and we're both from Save Oceanside Sand, we want more beach, we have lost volleyball courts, and they've just skinnied down, and we have fewer and fewer. Now, hopefully, under the current leadership, we're going to get more sand, and we'll be back to having that. But that beautiful, uh, there are big periods of time when that amphitheater is not really fully utilized. And we think there could be an application for putting volleyball, a volleyball court amphitheater in there. Now, what we're saying is making, not making it just for that dedicated, but making some sort of adaptation, like having a sand pit in the center, in a, if, it's, if it's remodeled, that would have sand in it with the volleyball courts. It fits, one fits, actually in the current design, you could get two in and have some sort of moving cover that could slide over it and return it back to its almost current configuration. And it would become a sort of an icon for Oceanside and a place for uh, high school playoffs of sand volleyball. Sand volleyball <coughs> has gotten a lot more popular as we've known, it's now in part of the Olympics and is a lot more important. So we, we think it would be very good. So I guess this isn't, isn't gonna get up. <laughs> we put some slides together just to show the concept, but we'll bring that probably at a future meeting. Um, Dirk, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Steve. Yeah, so Steve and I are involved with the Save Oceanside Sand effort, and we're confident that uh, in a couple of years, we'll be able to launch a project to restore our beaches uh, and, and add more sand to, the, uh, to our beaches. Um, along with that, we feel that a, that a sand volleyball venue, uh, mind you, a sand volleyball stadium at the, um, at the amphitheater would be a very exciting improvement for the city of Oceanside. Uh, I think it would be a real magnet for, uh, um, for, for visitors. It would attract a lot of, uh, a lot of um, tournaments here. Uh, and then when it's not even used, uh, I think it would be available for, for people just to, just to do pickup games out there in the amphitheater. And I think it would be, be real, uh, a real draw for people just to come by and watch and enjoy uh, sand volleyball. Because sand volleyball is such a, uh, uh, such a popular growing sport. In the Olympics, everyone knows. Uh, Steve has done some, some layouts of the, the, the um, area would, would suit two courts. Uh, and of course, uh, with volleyball, you've got uh, different heights for the men's and women's. So we could have both the men's and women's court in there. And would uh, would encourage just a lot of uh, a lot of um, exciting active lifestyle there. Uh, we think would be a, be a real magnet for other development for downtown uh, Oceanside. So uh, that's just an idea we're throwing out, and we'd like for the community to think about it and consider the option. Um, oh, you can see, and then one of them is the um, the, the New York venue. There's a, a picture of a of a. A similar stadium, and and um, you know the fact that uh, Oceanside could have something that would rival New York would be a be pretty impressive. Anyway, thanks for considering it. Thank you. Um, good evening, everyone. It is wonderful to see everybody here. Okay, so Arlene Hammerschmidt, formerly known at OHS as Miss Henry, um, from 85 to 2000, when I retired in 2000. Um, I'll stick to my points because other people are making theirs. Number one, build Oceanside. Make the city of Oceanside must, in my opinion, build two to three additional city community centers with full gymnasiums and activity classrooms and programs before any demolition or renovation, renovation to this beach community center because of the shortage of court space in this city. You can't take away one before there's more. Um, number two, anyway, repair and renovation only doesn't need to be taken down in my opinion, but that's the that, fast three minutes. Um, fund this by increasing the development impact fees equal to that of Carlsbad and Encinitas. Now that's gonna take city council to do that. Where's the will? If we wanna build this, 
we need the replacement centers first. Um, and I agree with a lot of people in this room. We can stop the gentrification of this city right now. We have. We have, we have passed the tipping point and it's enough already. It's enough. We're okay right now. Just stop right now. We're good. Thank you very much. Um, what was that? Oh, return the focus to the residents instead of the tourists. Thank you. Okay, our next set of speakers are Juan Kane, Mary Seau, Drew Andrioff, and Morgan McRae. If I could get you to start lining up at the podiums, that'd be great. And Mr. Kinney, you're on. Good evening, I am Juan Kinney. First, I would like to say that I'm glad to hear that the parking lot is on this location, is not part of the plan. Uh, second, preservation of facilities vital to youth's opportunity for enrichment and prevention of, a prevention of them getting involved in extremist groups. I also agree that the facilities need to be upgraded as they are in a sad state of repair. And as Ms. Hagerschmidt said, we need more facilities. Also, I do agree with her as she also did say that yes, we need to focus more on the residents and not making this city more of a tourist trap. I grew up here from 85 on until 2000 when I joined the army and I'm now retiring. And that's all that I have for this time. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Mary Sale, and I am I am the former junior Sale NFL player who used to reside here on the Strand. First of all, I want to say thank you very much for doing your homework. I was all ready to prepare to fight, fight, fight. Um, so, but what I really would like um, to say is that all we need is improvement. If the community center needs improvement, go ahead and take the stage down. Go ahead and spread the width, the length. So that way we can have more kids, more tournament, and also possibly um, handicap tournaments. That's what I really would like to see. And as far as for the amphitheater, that will need a lot of lay, um, facelift. And I do agree with the volleyball in the middle of the amphitheater, but we also have to look at the air, the salt, the dirt, because we don't want the cement to cause cancer for our residents. So we have to really look at that, but that's off the subject there. But all I would like to see is improvement. And um, that's it. And I want to say thank you very much for doing your homework. Because like I said, I was ready to fight. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Drew Andrioff. I'm a downtown advisory committee member, and uh, I'm really excited to see everybody show up tonight. It shows a lot of love and dedication to the site, and it's something that needs to remain. Um, I think we have a really great opportunity, and I'm excited to see what the future could hold for this area. I think that we can bring our people here within Oceanside together. We can look at recreating what's created so much history in Oceanside. And we can make that happen for generations to come. The, there's, a, there's, a, there's a lot of love down there at the beach. And I think that bringing us together, bringing our artists here in Oceanside to help develop part of the program and, and bring something architectural pleasing to, this, to the community is going gonna, is gonna to really benefit downtown and Oceanside residents, not just tourists coming to our city for a couple of months. We have the opportunity to provide more access to all these groups, to provide better facilities, to improve the lights, to improve the sound, bring all this stuff in, because it's not there right now. We have to bring everything to, this, to the stage at the amphitheater to, to bring any events to it. We have the opportunity to create new events, create new memories, create new history with our city. And through your dedication, through your work, through everyone being active in this process, we can make that happen. So I'm really excited about what's gonna happen. And 
I'm telling you, like, like uh, Mary said, we need to keep the name the same. It needs to be the junior center forever. And we need to continue bringing everybody together to, to make sure that we have this in Oceanside and have a beautiful new future for future generations to enjoy. Thank you. Is that good, Morgan? Yeah. Hello, everyone. It's nice to see everyone here. Um, I'm a, a city council candidate of 2020, so it's um, good to speak here again. Um, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so the first thing I want to say is that um, I'm glad that you're not discussing actually tearing down the amphitheater. So that's the first thing. And because it's the Oceanside landmark and famous spot, as we all know, and people come here for that amphitheater. Um, uh, this is what on the screen is um, a new amphitheater that was just built in Marietta. And if we can just expand on that amphitheater area and make it more appealing and um, just better for the audience and the people on Oceanside, I think that would be great. We can put lights in there. I know there's like electricity problems or, you know, you have to bring in a whole bunch of stuff. So if we could like expand on the lighting, the seating, um, expand on the stage because it's relatively small for a lot of things and just make it more grand for everybody here because it's a great place for um, performers and musicians and opportunities. So we don't wanna take that away as well as just entertainment for the city too. And um, also same thing with the community center for the kids and everything, you know, expand on that, make it nicer, fresher, you know, more bathrooms, cleaner, um, cause that's definitely a place that kids need as well. So um, let's just expand and make things better for the city um, rather than taking away or anything like that. And um, I hope the city council will continue to listen to the community and stay transparent as well. And I think um, we can make this something that's really, really great if we all work together and um, improve on it. Thank you. Okay, our next set of speakers are Nancy Craig to be followed by Rob Howard, to be followed by Fernando Juarez, to be followed by Nina Russell. If you can line up at the podiums, that'd be great. My name is Nancy Craig, and I've lived in Oceanside for 33 years. And uh, bear with me here. I lose words sometimes. I'm 81. And um, thank you for your presentation. That was great. And um, I'm glad everybody's here. And I know we all love and support our bandstand and our community center, which we lost years ago. There was It was given away by whatever the council members were at that time, they gave it away to Manchester. They gave him the, and they approved his project to build on top of Pacific Street, not beside it, but on top of it, take out our amphitheater and take out our community center. And thanks to a group of grassroots people who worked really hard to change that and the, and the Coastal Commission, it was stopped. Oh, and they also gave him for free Cores, El Corazon to build a golf course and a hotel. That's our history, folks, for you people that are new. And we don't want to see that happen again. And I know these, these facilities can be painted, fixed up, but, but they serve such a great part of our community. And um, by the way, when we got rid of Manchester, we had to pay $2 million out of the city funds to get rid of him. And then he came back and he bought out our wonderful daily newspaper for $13 million. He fired everybody and he shut it down. That's a big part of Oceanside's history. So please don't forget that. And remember, this, this, is, a, this is a beach town. It's a blue collar town. It's, a, it's for the people, visitors, but it's also a marine town. And the Marines, and when you see them wandering around downtown, these, these kids, a lot of them are homesick. They need somebody to talk to. Talk to them. Tell them how wonderful they are. Anyway, thank you. Thank you. Hi, hi I'm Rob Howard, uh, Oceanside resident. Um, again, I want to reiterate, it is very appreciative to see that there was an effort to reach out to some of the cultural groups to ensure that they were included. 
One of the things that I just want to, to really stress is that we do need more access for young people. Um, when young people do not have something taking up their time, they will take up their time with something. And it is important if we want our community to be safer and, and, and growing, we need to make sure that the access is there. The other thing that I think is kind of interesting is that we should also in the planning, not the consultants, but for the city to be thinking about the fact that we are pulling up numerous hotels out here who are getting a pass on TOT for several years. And that is an investment. <laughs> what I am proposing as a part of this process is that the city have a fund for all of the amount that we're giving them on TOT. That number should be put aside to be able to invest in community groups and Oceanside residents to use these facilities, regardless of what the final plan will be. Because the reason, the, the reason that is important is, is similar to the discussion around healthcare, having access to healthcare. Well, I got access to healthcare if I can afford it. I wanna make sure that not only do we have access to use these new facilities, but that we can actually afford to use them. And that should be a part of what we do, invest in our city, invest in our residents. Uh, lastly, what I'll say, it's, it's always, we talk about investment. We wanna invest because we wanna bring people here. Well, we have people who are here who should be invested in. Make sure that that is a part of what we do. Make sure it's available. Those cultural activities and events will also not only be good for the people who live here, but it is a cultural education for people who don't know these things when they come to Ocean Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Fernando Juarez, followed by Nina Russell, to be followed by Gigi Nar Narisma, to be followed by Trevor Salazar. Yo, hello, hello, what's up? How you guys doing, everybody? Um, I'm just here, emotion side resident. I'm here coming out of uh, Botherama Park. Um, I just want to know is what's going on with all the sources for the kids out there. What's going on with them? As you guys can see, the gang violence is rising. Why? Because there's no sources for these kids. If we could get some programs out there for these kids, shit will change. Stuff will change. But if we're too late, these kids are going to end up in coffins, and that's what we don't want. You know, that's the reason why I'm here speaking to you guys to let you guys know. I'm an Oceanside resident. I've been here since the 90s. I've been running these streets since the 90s. I get harassed all the time by the cop, all the time, or stereotyping, judging people by what they look like. It shouldn't be like that in the city. We all got tattoos. We shouldn't be judged by what we look like. You know what I mean? So I, I never did this in my life. This is my first time ever coming up to the I'm here to help. every day. You know, I mean, I'm here to help, and this is what I'm here for. So, you guys know me. You guys know who I am. Born and raised in Oceanside. I ran these streets. You know, I want to see some something change. I want to see some changes before it's too late. You know, that's what I'm here for. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Nina Russell, to be followed by Gigi Narisma, to be followed by Trevor Salazar, to be followed by Sally uh, Haggerty. If you could please start lining up by the podiums. Thank you. Hi, my name is Nina Russell, and I'm fortunate en enough to have lived here long enough to have seen when there was a permanent carnival down by the pier. There was a roller rink. There were all kinds of things besides the band shell, the pier, whatnot. They've all disappeared. So I'm really excited to hear what you're saying that we're gonna try to keep what we have and just improve upon it. And when you do that, I want you to keep in mind what we're using it for right now. There's people on those hard areas, skateboarding and roller skating, enjoying the open place where you can just walk up and walk onto the stage and be a superstar for a day. I had my prom in the Junior Sale Community Center and I graduated at the band shell. When you improve on those things, I hope that you'll keep the aesthetic that we have here in the city. You don't try to make it some new modern or different kind of look that it still matches what the city has, that it's not a magnet for a homeless or that it's not something that you're trying to make appealing for tourists. Um, they do have enough. And with that being said, I really also hope that you try not to squeeze in retail 
commercial or food vending in those places. People can rent their surfboards, their um, beach gear, other places in the city, and we really don't want to waste our open community spaces for that. I also hope that you'll make those meeting spaces in the community center places that we can rent or use that you take advantage of the views. So say if we're gonna have a kid's birthday party there, we can open the door and have it open and see the ocean. Cause right now it seems really closed off and you're kind of missing the mark and missing the appeal of that great space. And that the colors stay neutral and that maybe we can make it a great um, amphitheater like what the Vista Moonlight Theater is. That'd be really nice. Here. Thanks for cheering us on. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Gigi. I am a nurse. I am an educator at Miracosta College. So many times I've been invited to speak out with the youth. So many things that have been happening in this area. A lot of gangs and a lot of suicide. So by promoting the opening of the facilities, it helps preventing the lives of the young and adult. So I am here because my kids told me to speak up for truth. And thank you, Mary, for saying that you not try to fight. I am here to fight as well. The first question you said that, what is all about this building, the site? The site is for the residents to enjoy, not the tourists. I agree with that. I've been here 30 years and I've seen a lot of business uh, allocation there, but we, you need to preserve also how to enjoy the family, how to enjoy the kids by preventing derailing their lives. Alcoholic, gangs, suicidal, there's a lot of problem by, by, by promoting opening of the site, it will really promote the lives of the young and adult. And the last thing and I wanna say is keeping the site is very important to all the residents. It's not about the tourists, it's about us. So when you do a transparent business plan, it should be goes to the public. Transparency is what we need in the public as a recipient as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Trevor Salazar to be followed by Sally Haggerty to be followed by Max Esposi to be followed by Luke Gerling. Salazar. Um, what brings me here today is the fear of the potential this project has of being a force of gentrification. What makes gentrification so sinister is that it reduces a community's value to merely a dollar amount and negates the value of history, culture, and heritage, all of which you have heard in excess tonight. Um, it does so for the promise of fatter wallets for some at the expense of those who have invested their lives here. This process has already begun, so we must use this opportunity to draw a line and to do so, we must decide who we wish to benefit the most. When it comes to the hotels down the street, it's not us, the citizens of Oceanside, who reap the majority of the benefits. We receive crumbs in comparison to the profits developers who put them there make. Uh, we can't even see the water from the street anymore. That's right. Yeah. However, we do reap the benefits of the bandstand in the community center, and it must stay that way, bar none. Um, these are pillars of entertainment, leisure, history, recreation, and community. It is imperative that the city and its people do everything in their power to ensure that people who live here right now, not those who come here for the summer, not those who what we think we want, we think want, we think we want to have come here. Um, those who are here now need to be prioritized over everything else. Every decision made from here on out must combat the gentrification in this city because where are we gonna go? All power to the people of Oceanside. Thank you. Thank you.
Sally Haggerty here. First thing I'd like to do is just look around in this, this amphitheater here. Look at the faces, look at the type of people who are here. This, this is Oceanside. This, this is Oceanside. And our band shell and our SEO center are for us. I live in old Oceanside town site, been here 45 years. I live close to Center Street and not that far from Pasole. Those children deserve a place to play. Those children deserve a place to go and be part of sports. Melba Bishop Center is not gonna help these children. They could walk to the band shell and they could walk to the, to the Seau Center. My own personal history there, which, which touches my heart, is um, at the Seau Center back in the 80s when I had a, a four and three-year-old, I was doing jazzercise there. We had jazzercise classes, remember that? <laughs> okay. um, and there was childcare, actually. Um, I've done volleyball there. I've done the bike races, volunteered at the various events that we do here in Oceanside there. I watched my children play basketball there. I watched my grandchildren play basketball there. It's an important part of Oceanside and all it needs to be is upgraded, nothing else, just improved and upgraded. As far as the band shell goes, maybe many of you remember or not, I watched Johnny Cash there with the ocean behind us. Do you remember that? We had our concerts on the beach. I saw Judy Collins there. Same thing. I watched both my sons graduate from Oceanside High at that band show. When I walk down to the ocean every day and walk along the beach, I see people running those stairs. I see boot camps in the center part. I see Pop Warner exercising. This band shell, this um, Seau Center is our part of Oceanside. And it needs to stay that way. Thank you. Can I start? Yes, good evening. Uh, my name is Max Disposti. I'm a resident of District 1. And uh, I've been here for about 20 years. I also run a nonprofit, the LGBT Center here in Oceanside, that actually is located in District 1 as well. And we serve a high number of populations that do use the beach because we have plenty of support groups and people that come to the beach for their mental health and many other things. So I appreciate the introductions tonight. However, allow us a little bit of fear concern because we have a history in Oceanside, perhaps you're not aware of, um, of concerns because um, some elected officials actually told us that everything was on the table. Everything was on the table. They brought it down on their social media correspondence so that concerns us because it happened before. Uh, as many have mentioned before, uh, we believe them when they say everything is on the table because we have seen this happening before in our city. And the fact that, for instance, the city has started appointing a committee to have the conversation around this. It was an external committee. Nobody knew these people. Some of them were outsider promotion side. That's not a good way to start the conversation. So that concerned us. It made us really, really, uh, aware of the problems. That's why we came here. So look at downtown, there are not many spaces available. For some people it looks pretty, for most of us, it looks like a place where we can't go anymore. So we need uh, to maintain and nurture the spaces, the public space that we have. Um, so we appreciate the open process, but at the same time, I think the message tonight is do not touch our public land just to benefit private purposes. Do not touch the public land. And, uh, so this is a great opportunity actually for us to send a message in the opposite directions. Let's make this space a monument for public recreational use that reflects the needs of our community and be affordable to all. It's an opportunity for send, to send another message and I conclude, guarantee that our coastal hotels, hotels are not taking over that space little by little through umbrella and chairs that we see appearing already and then they claim the title for that space of land. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Next, we have Luke Gerling to be followed by Gordon Chavez to be followed by Joanne Fields. And for those who are on Zoom, if you would like to speak, uh, please raise your hand now. We will get to you shortly. Hi, everybody. My name's Luke. Um, thank you for the presentation. It, I think it erased a lot of question and stuff that everybody in the room kind of had. I, I had a whole plan that got erased. Um, 
And now everybody in front of me has kind of repeated already what, I've, what I'm going to say, so I'll probably repeat again. But um, I, I graduated in the band shell in the 99, and um, it, was, it was one of the raddest things I've ever... I mean, I, I, I'm baffled that the high school doesn't, doesn't do it there. It's kind of sad now, but I think that that needs to be some, some kind of push to get the kids back there. It was an amazing experience. Um, I grew up playing basketball at the rec center, summer camps, aquatics camp in the eighties. Uh, I I'm pleased to hear that that's uh, going to be an ongoing thing. Um, maybe something not so gaudy, maybe something not too flashy, maybe Oceanside, you know, like take consideration the original Oceanside, you know, if you're going to, if you're going to be do some, some drastic changes, hopefully it's not too drastic. I'm not a fan of change. So this is really tough to, to hear you guys want to change things. I like the crustiness of it. I like the beach town of it. I'm, I'm from Oceanside. You know, I, I, didn't, I didn't get involved with the Manchester stuff um, and I regret it. And that's why I come to these and I try to voice out my opinion and the local stuff. So now I can't find parking to surf where I've always surfed at the pier because the motel or the hotel and all the stuff that's going on. It's, but uh, I know progression happens. I know there's, there probably needs some updating and everything. I just hold you guys uh, of, of high concern because of past um, city mess ups and, and, and negotiations that have piled up. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Gordon Chavez. I thank you for allowing me to speak here today. Uh, my family made Oceanside our home back around 1980, so we've been here for a little while. My wife and I are now raising four boys here in Oceanside. So we have kind of multiplied ourselves and we're giving back. So my concern is really the youth. Um, we, I, I love the idea of upgrading these facilities. I love the idea of making them more useful. Um, I think that if we lose them, we're not gonna honor the sale family. We're not gonna honor the cultural diversity that we have here today. Um, you know, you can see this compared to any other city council meeting. It, it's, it's very different. You can see the city stepped up and came out to represent uh, what we what we really want for our city. And so if we can upgrade it, maintain it, make it more accessible for youth programs, uh, it seems to be somewhat difficult to get youth programs going, uh, make it safe for the youth if there's activities going on after dark and things like that, making it a safe place for them to come to. Um, and then, you know, making it accessible. I don't know if that means having some kind of transportation to allow the youth to come to it because it is getting harder to find parking and things like that here near, in downtown. Um, and I think that if, uh, if the city focuses more on the residents, as it's already been said many times, that uh, you can't go wrong with that. You know, tourists are going to come, though. The city's beautiful, um, but we need to focus on our residents and not forget about our residents. But it's like the downtown, as soon as you hit like Horn and go downtown towards the beach, it's changing. It's not even like what Oceanside used to be. So, and becoming inaccessible as well. So, I think that that's pretty much it. Um, maintaining its status as parkland, I think. It would be important and helpful. Um, yeah, I think, you know, maintain the access to all the cultural activities that you guys already mentioned, the Samoan cultural fets, Filipino groups, the Juneteenth, all of those groups so that we can just maintain the cultural diversity in the city. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, next we have Joanne Fields to be followed by Beatrice Palmer to be followed by Ann Jeanette Oberg. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Joanne Fields. I'm government and public relations director for the Asian Pacific Islander Initiative. And I appreciate that our mayor um, Sanchez have posted at the forums tonight. It was a good reminder to see that on social media, but also to learn your schedule for the 20 other outreach events 20 opportunities for the whole community to be able to share their thoughts. And that's what we hear echoed time and time again. So when you ask for um, what improvements, it is an amphitheater. So please improve the acoustics. Please provide Wi-Fi. Please provide access for wheelchairs, for strollers. And of course, our youth 
but I'm starting to get up there in age. So I need to be able to access it and not have to walk blocks and blocks away because there was no parking. So if there's a drop off that you can um, facilitate uh, to get to, um, you, know, you know, these, uh, the amphitheater or the, the, the community center, it would be very helpful. But also when you look at the pictures and I appreciate Morgan gave an example of what it could look like, because that's what we need to see or what are examples that we can see happen um, here in Oceanside. But what I would like to see is also maybe paintings, murals or statues um, so we can honor Junior Seau. He put Oceanside on the map. He is Oceanside and he's Pacific Islander. Many times we hear stop APIA, stop this, stop that, but let's celebrate what we can. And I love the fact that um, Chula, um, Chula Vista, oh, that was in my head, but Oceanside is so diverse and celebrates so many diverse events so that our neighbors can know who we are. If you are Samoan or if you're Filipino or even Juneteenth, the people know what that history is because it's not taught in school. So we can teach it at this um, place. Thank you. Thank you. Am I next? Yes. Hi, um, good evening, buenas tardes. My name is Beatriz Palmer, and I immigrated to Oceanside when I was two years old, so that was almost years ago. A few months ago, we spoke in support of keeping the Brook Street Pool open, and now we find ourselves again here. I know that you shared a lot of the, the good things we wanted to hear, but you have to understand there's a spirit of distrust, distrust in our community. If you grew up in Oceanside, you know that these places are more than a tourist area. These are iconic historical places for those who grew up here, even immigrant families like me. Growing up, our family, like many of the Oceansides, didn't have access to these resources. The first time I visited the beach was through a school. I grew up in Center Street and Pozole, and I think in the Valley area, they probably have limited access to these resources as well. I was the first to graduate Oceanside High School, but I'm not the last. And one of the things that pushed me to graduate was walking across that stage in 1990. For many of us in Oceanside, that's what maintains us on path to graduation, walking across the band shell. So as an OHS pirate, I strongly ask that you continue to keep the aesthetics as well as the spirit. And if you're gonna change any of the art, let it represent not only Junior, but also its people like the ones that you see here and like the people from Pozole and Center Street, the Chicanos, the Samoan, and the rest of my brothers and sisters. I read that one of the committee members didn't think that this community center was used much, but don't you remember that we've been under COVID for almost two years? It was also interesting to me that we came to these conclusions again without the in community input. It took a lot for you to do your homework. It is also interesting to me that the city found a way to maintain an old house that was almost falling known as the Top Gun House. This house had some historical value, but nothing compared to the band shell, the amphitheater and the community center. When there was a please find a way because this is our place. It's not just a tourist place. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Um, my name is Aja Oberg, and I'm a, a psychology professor at Miracosta College. I'm an Oceanside resident. I'm also a Pacific Islander. So for me, the amphitheater, I echo the sentiments of my dear friend and colleague B, um, and many of the residents that spoke here today. Um, for me, it, the amphitheater represents healing. I particularly appreciate um, the cultural festivals that happen there and the community that is inspired in the events there. Uh, it, it was a place for me to find refuge after my divorce. Um, we had family movies in the amphitheater, and it was a time for us to really just find ourselves and discover community here. Uh, so I think it's really important to preserve what is already in place. 
Uh, the challenges are, of course, the gentrification and the tourism and the lack of prioritization of the residents and the community needs. And I don't know if you've considered this, but have you considered inviting some college students as interns to contribute to the vision and development plans? So then you have direct input and you're actually helping to cultivate the future skills and contributions of our city residents and future architects to inspire upcoming generations. So. Thank you. Our next speakers are David Nunez, to be followed by Ken Layton, to be followed by Anthony Wright, to be followed by Heather DeNaro. I think many of the things that concern me and the people I represent, my family and people that couldn't be here tonight uh, have been worded very eloquently by Mr. Pumele and by other residents that have spoken today. And uh, I can appreciate Mr. Johnson, your words so eloquently spoken and what we want to hear. But I'm also old enough and, and I know that sometimes wolves come as good orders and as something to give you, you know? So I'm hoping that you truly you say you've made your life purpose to develop community in public spaces. And I hope you, you really mean that. I don't know what other projects you've worked on or what other things you've done that could represent how happy those communities are. I think first and foremost, like most of my citizens, fellow citizens, the graduation has to stay there. It absolutely has to stay there. I came here prepared for a fight like Mary, like Gigi, like many people. I'm relieved that the fight won't be so much tonight, but I don't want any leaders or people in positions of power to think that the fight is not coming. If you Listen to the words that we're saying and accommodate what we want. Aside from the graduations, I like the ideas of the grass. I like the ideas of the sand. So long as it, the graduations can happen there, so long as the community and cultural functions can happen there, in a time when we're getting divided by so many things, these things bring us together as people. These things help us find commonality. So, and the other thing is I really do, I really do, and I think most of the citizens here would believe that it cannot be renamed, that it has to stay Junior Sales Place, because that is our place. We cannot sell the rights to name that place. That money is not important to us. Tax the hotels, tax the tourists, find a way, do your jobs, be creative, in the way that the money can come, but do not sell the name. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ken Layton. I graduated from the Banshell with the Oceanside High School in the 70s, and my parents did when it was Oceanside Carlsbad High School a few years earlier. Uh, I, my band that I managed called Incognito played there in 81, and I put on a show by the Penetrators in 1984. We had like 400 kids at the Beach Community Center. Anybody remember that? The point, the point is, it doesn't really matter, it's just a setup. The point is, is that the band shell absolutely should be used to, for, the, for all community events that have, they've been used for so far. It, you know, all the Samoan, all the Filipino, all the graduations, everything should continue there. But why do we have to have cheap Oceanside yesterday, depression era relic? Why don't we build a state of the art you can connect with an, an outdoor, with a promoter that would have it for say 30 or 35 days a year. They pay for the build out, they pay for the state of the art, you know, equipment and all the PA and everything. And the city of Oceanside, which controls everything, gets to, gets to say, you get to have it for X amount of days and that's it. And we're still gonna use this brand new sparkling facility 
for everything else that we've ever used. And it's gonna be presented in a sparkling state of the art fashion that Oceanside deserves. And for all the people who wonder, who brought up about the children of the, the local children need to be taken care of. I wanna know where you've been when uh, Donald Yasakochi wanted to bring his kids, his basketball kids to play there and he was turned away by the city of Oceanside. Now you're coming around, which is nice because you might get on TV, but where were you back in the day? And to Trevor Salazar, I've never heard your name before, but whoever you are, we want you to run for city council. Thank you. Anthony Wright, to be followed by Heather DeNaro, to be followed by Brian Sullivan, to be followed by Jimmy Knott. Again, if you can start lining up at the podiums, that would help us out. Anthony Wright. Okay, let's move on to Heather. If Anthony's in the uh, lobby, could somebody grab him? Mr. Naro, if you want to start. Good evening. My name is Heather De Niro. I'm a fourth generation Oceanside resident, and I had the privilege of graduating at the Band Shell in 2003 from Oceanside High School. As a lot of people have mentioned tonight, Mr. Pamelli, Nina, Beatrice, David, Luke, it's a rite of passage in Oceanside. You look forward to it as an Oceanside High School student from kindergarten. You know you're gonna be down there at the pier on a beautiful June afternoon walking across that stage. And it's heartbreaking that our kids don't get to experience that. I think our goal is to not only preserve and protect, but to enhance. I love and agree with the sentiments of keeping it, you know, let's enhance it, but the beauty is Oceanside, right? The beauty's the pier, the beauty's the people, the beauty's the scenery. We don't need to draw unwanted attention to a Huntington Beach style building, right? We already have too much of that. And in regards to the community center, I've had the privilege of watching nieces, nephews, cousins, neighbors at the rec center. I played basketball at the rec center. Nicole Marzi, we played basketball there, St. Mary's back in you know the 90s. And it's a shame that kids have to go all the way down to Melba Bishop. If you live in South Oceanside, you don't wanna to drive to Melba Bishop. You need to be able to walk to a rec center. I'm 30 years old and I don't like driving to Melba Bishop, let alone these kids who don't have transportation, how are they gonna get out there? So again, I think the goal for all of us is to preserve, protect, enhance, and keep these community facilities available for everybody and especially our youth. Thank you. Thank you. Anthony Wright? Is Anthony Wright in the room? Okay, let's move on to Brian Sullivan. Thank you. If you have some patience with me, I appreciate it. A little bit, a little trouble breathing. So. No problem. I'll start with just saying that uh, I'm an old Oceanside resident. I am an Oceansider. Uh, every inch of me, been here since the 50s. Watched this place turn from a small little quiet town into a rather hyper place during the Vietnam War. Come back with all the growth in the 70s and the 80s and see all the change that has gone on. During that time, I have served in a number of different functions and always with wonderful people. Everything from the schools, the school system, Seagate's concert series, the planning commission. It's been a great, great trip and a great endeavor. So tonight, I wanna to commend you. You're trying to make us fo focus on function, not design, and I like that. And I think I heartily endorse everything that my fellow citizens have said in regards to the function of both the amphitheater and the community center itself. I think that what's going wrong is simply that the functions that should be put in there nowadays, facilities cannot meet them. Uh, they haven't grown up with the idea and, and it really needs to be changed to facilitate that. Uh, I think the community center is underused. I concur with you about the basketball. I'll talk about that in a second. 
I see that community center roof begging to have bocce ball courts and other recreational activities as a roof rather than a rooftop. And as far as the basketball goes, I love the idea of having that court there. But the reality really is, when I served with the school district, I took care of their facility. And it was obvious 20 years ago that the demographics were showing that the center of our students were moving east. And we do not have facilities out east. It's a shame that we have a basketball court that they have to reach on the coast or one that they have to reach in the furthest east. I know for the fact the school board that I served at the time I was in the school district saw to it the three middle school gymnasiums, not gymnasiums, but locker rooms that were added, all accommodated and had footprints accommodated to add gyms to them very easily. Lincoln, Jefferson, and Chavez Middle School. So I know that exists. I think that you shouldn't have a sacred cow there. You should evaluate everything and take a hard look at it. We've learned so much with the Seagate series and the number of those people that work those concert series with us are right in this room today. And a lot of hard work went into that. And the only reason that that group existed at the time was to show the city the gem they had on their hands and what could be done with it. Uh, we promised them 10 years. We got 10 years out of it. Kept our ticket prices under 15, and that was an endeavor. Mr. Sullivan, that's time. I'm sorry. No, no problem. So it goes anyway, by fast. Uh, I think focus on function and what you're doing, I think, should be applauded. And I hope this keeps going in the right direction. Thank you. Thank you. Jimmy Knott, 127 Sherry Lane. 1959, when I was four years old. One thing to tell everybody in the room here, watch out, protect what you have or you'll lose it. Thinking back, I was listening to people. The, we used to have a changing room. We used to have an arcade down in the beach area. We used to have a plunge. We used to have a cooking, gas cooking area down at the beach. Where are they now? We didn't watch out. We didn't protect it. They're gone. Amenities that we need now. What happens is, is that if we don't watch out for the band shell and the other places, bye, bye. We need to take and look at, because when I was a kid, I remember the summer concert series. They were free and open to the public. They were wonderful to just go sit there on the Sunday afternoon. We had the paid concerts, of course. We might want to improve the seating. I have to say the concrete, as you get older, doesn't feel good. Um, graduation, special events. One thing for sure, improve the ADA access, as it also serves seniors as well, come to find out. Consider maybe putting a multiple story onto the rec center that might take and serve in multiple purposes. Make it family friendly. Maybe reimagine it to take and do that purpose. And also, if new resorts, hotels, and stuff paired, they'd sponsor some of these things. And one final thing, the homelessness is not new. They used to call them hippies. <laughs> they used to call, the, before they were called hippies, they were called pokies. Then they go back and back and back. We have always had that problem. It's called by a different name now. It's just people like you and I, that are in a little bit of a problem for the time. There are brothers and sisters. Please help. Thank you. Our next speakers are James Gilliam, to be followed by Tom Agosta, to be followed by Lisa Russell, to be followed by Sebastian De La Torre. Um, and just as a reminder, it is two minutes. Um, please try to, to stay to two minutes so that we're equitable to everybody here in the room. 
And Mr. Gilliam, you can start. Uh, hi, Jim Gilliam. I am uh, uh, moved to the city of Oceanside in 2006, and I uh, came to San Diego County in 2005 to work for the city of Encinitas. Uh, I'm the arts administrator for the city. And uh, I, I really love Oceanside. I love living here. I love the diversity, and I love calling Oceanside home. Uh, and I'm, I'm here to speak about the arts facilities that are part of this project. I'm, I'm heartened to know that they're not at risk. That's terrific. Uh, what's really incredible is that Oceanside has this remarkable historic amphitheater and this community center right on the beach uh, with a stage inside. So I'm, I'm really thrilled to know that they're safe and that uh, you're only talking about improving them. Um, and I've been, this is my first time to come to the city and speak. Uh, and I've been waiting for this opportunity because I knew eventually Oceanside would come around and take a look at those facilities and decide it's time to put some money into them. And so I'm, I'm thrilled about that. And I anticipate that there, there is gonna be ample city budget to, to be able to do these projects. So hopefully that will come down the pike. But I wanna let you know that if Encinitas had this amphitheater, I would have spent all my time programming incredible concerts uh, at this facility. It's, it's beyond remarkable. If you consider that in San Diego County, it is the only amphitheater of its kind. We have it right here in the city. And it is a sleeping giant. It is the envy of other cities. But what's sad about it is that it has not been programmed by city staff like it should have been for many, many years. We've just relied on the community to use these spaces and therefore it's a real missed opportunity. So I wanna encourage the mayor, I'm thrilled that you're here. Wonderful that you're here. And I'm hopeful that city staff will take an, a greater interest in these facilities and, and that uh, they will be technically improved so that they meet the standards, standards of today. The, the stage, please don't forget the stage as well because it's a, it's a terrific opportunity when you consider you have an indoor space and an outdoor space. So uh, with that, thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Tom Agosta. Uh, I'm not a long-term time resident. I moved here at the end of 2019 uh, because I certainly wanted to be no place other than Oceanside for COVID. So, uh, but basically, uh, the reason I'm here is uh, Oceanside is my new home. And uh, after seeing hotels go up, uh, blocking the view from the ocean, and then I heard about Junior Seau's uh, amphitheater being destroyed and put a parking lot, I came down here because I'm gonna fight for my new home. I, one of the reasons uh, I'm passionate about this is uh, I lived my whole life in Detroit, Michigan. I had a restaurant there and uh, that city sold its heart and soul to the highest bidder. And it's an unlivable city. And I do not want that to happen to my new adopted city here in Oceanside. And uh, I, I see a lot of people from the hotels using the uh, facilities, uh, the beach facilities. I'm assuming uh, or I'm hoping that they are paying for those in some way uh, to the access to that. So if not, that I think is something that we should make sure if it's not already happening that uh, that we can somehow do that. But anyways, uh, I'm glad the plan is not to have a uh, parking lot because that would be horrible. And again, uh, I appreciate uh, being able to talk about to, to uh, express my opinion on this. And thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Lisa Russell. I'm a longtime resident, October 1960. And to speak today, I wanna to make sure that I heard correct that the advisory board that they had, advisory committee is no longer. I thought I heard that in the beginning. Yes, right now we're not pursuing the advisory committee. Okay, so are, are these um, ideas going to go to the Parks and Recreation Board? Yes, they are gonna go to Parks and Rec. And I apologize, I do, I'm gonna note all the questions that way if I can't answer all of them right now, we can at the end, but yes, 
they're going to go to Parks and Recreation. Okay, that's what I was hoping. Um, I'd like to thank you. I'd like the presentation, Steve, and I'd like to thank the city. Um, I'd like to thank the people for coming today. There's a lot of uh, good that I heard come out of this. Everything I echo. Um, I really, you know, the Beach Community Center, Junior Seau's name, we're going to keep that. We know we're going to keep that. I like the maintain, improve, and expand. I want to just make sure that it stays at that. I like that we're having this meeting tonight. I like that there's upcoming meetings. I'd like them to be, I'd like to have notice, some type of notice. I uh, was texted by somebody saying, I can't get on Zoom. And I tried to get on the city site. Obviously there's people on Zoom, but I couldn't find the Zoom information. So I'd like this information to go out to everybody. Um, I tried to get out the information to as many people as I could. Um, so if we can get that in advance, I'd like that for everybody. I echo Arlene Hammerschmidt. I really, um, Sam Pamilly, you know, we've got to work together and we've got to keep the youth. Um, that's not your deal, but you're supposed to build something so that we can. The city needs to come together. And I appreciate that you're listening to citizens because look around because this is ocean side right here. And I'm happy to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sebastian De La Torre. Good evening, How are you guys doing? Uh, first and foremost, I'm very thankful to be up here as a proud Oceanside resident uh, to speak out of our community. And um, the underlying problem was going down. Uh, first and foremost, thank you committee and council for being here. Um, not so much for the city of council because you've continued to sell out the city of Oceanside for what it is and what it's been. Um, I've been here since a little kid uh, growing up on the Strand before you guys developed all this stuff. Before on Mission Avenue, you could look down and see the ocean. Um, I feel like our city leaders have bailed us um, and it really breaks my heart. And I can feel a lot of people, I can speak to a lot of people, uh, local Oceanside residents that, yes, do better for us. That's all I ask for. Thank you committee for showing up here. I really want the band shell to be preserved for what it is for the community of Oceanside, for what it represents to Oceanside as a very diverse community. We're, we're Latin, uh, Hispanic, Samoan, Mexican white. It's a very big cultural melting pot, which makes Oceanside such a diverse community for what it is. Um, 10 years ago, a lot of people that are coming here now would never be here. They would down talk Oceanside. And now they're the same people that are coming up here to exploit our city. All I'm asking for is to, to preserve what Oceanside is, the culture of Oceanside, the love that the local residents here have for that. I remember being there as a little kid, walking down as a little kid, skating there. I walked across that same band shell as everyone else, Oceanside Pirates, 2004. And my whole thing is, we've heard a lot of things from our city of council that have let us down and weary and full of despair. All I want is accountability. If you're gonna say something, mean it. And sorry guys, city of council of Oceanside, no disrespect, but we don't trust you. You're not for our city of Oceanside. Look around, guys. Look around. See that? That's Oceanside. Not your little tourists. Not all this stuff. With all due respect, stop saying your city stuff out. Because when tourism's gone, all you have is us. When no one would come here, all you had was us. Thank you. Thank you. The next set of uh, the next set of speakers are Joan Bachman to be followed by Eric Joyce to be followed by Angela Holder to be followed by Kareem Pinkston. Please come on down um, and line up by the podiums. And Ms. Bachman. Hey, Joan Bachman. Um, following the last speaker, if you're in District One, please sign the recall petition. Get a hold of it. Um, so the, the beaches for the residents, I think that's been made very clear. We are all residents here. We know each other. My kids have been on teams with um, half the people's kids in here. Uh, my son had his first 100 point game in that gym. He was in eighth grade, they were playing seventh graders and the seventh graders committed turnovers to get to 100. Anyway, <laughs> it was a great experience. Um, his brother graduated uh, from Oceanside High there. So 
And I heard Johnny Cash from my house. So uh, that was pretty cool, <laughs> unmistakable. Um, so there's a lot of things there, um, but it's really for the residents and that's regardless of income. And you know, there's so much to unpack there. We are losing so much housing stock uh, due to short-term rentals, due to ghost homes. Three homes on my street are not occupied. They're owned by people who live in other places. And so we have got to get control of this. Also, if you look at um, Oceanside Unified Data, which I did as a member of uh, one of the boundary committees. I think I've been on every committee in the city. Um, most of our kids live in apartments. They're not in the single family neighborhoods. And we need to address that. We need to get serious. Arlene started this by saying we need to put um, facilities in other parts of the city. Absolutely. We only have three of our four pools. That's counting El Corazon. So we need another pool, <laughs> not we aren't done with El Corazon. We need one more pool. And so these are all very important things for our residents. And we've got to get our facilities to the residents. I think this, we love it as it is. Obviously, it needs some improvements in various ways, sound or whatever, uh, but not major. And certainly not a, a um, um, volleyball court. I think there's some on the beach already and at the harbor. I don't think we need that. <laughs> so... Um, also, view corridors belong to the residents. And right now, Mission Avenue is blocked with palm trees. There are five palm trees across the base of Mission Avenue, plus one in the middle of the road, and they have got to go. Um, we also have never been able to see the pier because of the palm trees. So let's take view corridors a lot more seriously. Um, I don't think I mentioned it at the beginning, but no one has said we're on unceded land. There's a whole lot more history here that we need to uh, bring in. And- um, That's time. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, but finally, uh, also Irving Gill is the architect. So please do that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Eric Joyce to be followed by Angela Holder to be followed by Kareem Pinkston. Good evening, I'm Eric Joyce. I'm a father and I live in district one. I appreciate the responsive presentation. It seems clear now where it wasn't before. The reason we've had such a response tonight is because of the murky opening this process took. There was an advisory group created without transparency or frankly jurisdiction to make decisions about a very important piece of our uh, city. You mentioned 21 future meetings, 21 future meetings. Understand that attendance to 21 public meetings especially during daytime hours, but also during the nights for working parents is challenging. I ask that the process be clear and accessible to the communities which are already lacking access to this very center that we're talking about tonight. We are here tonight and the message has been very clear. While you said many things that could temper some concerns, I also hear there's gonna be many, many options and the process will likely change. We've been here before. This is just the beginning, so we need to keep coming back to these meetings because this is just the beginning. I'm asking for two things. One, the community center and band shall remain accessible to our community. That means free and that means open. We cannot sacrifice access for the bells and whistles of a private partnership. These are the people spaces and for too long we poured city resources into tourist amenities instead of improving the lives of Oceanside community. Number two, our youth be centered in the conversation. As many people brought tonight, generations of Oceanside seniors made their great memory of walking across the stage of that Bansell stage, graduating from Oceanside High School the graduation ceremony, ceremony needs to be preserved without the ridiculous fees that would be charged to the Oceanside Unified School District. Don't sell out every last inch of the city to the highest bidder. Invest in our kids, invest in our city. Thank you. Hi everybody, uh, my name is Angela Holder. I was actually born just a few blocks that way, it used to be Tri-City East, I believe, Tri-City West. Um, my husband, myself, all three of my children were born and raised in Oceanside. I plan to die in Oceanside, much to my husband's chagrin. So when I have heard everything that I've heard from all the other constituents, 
I basically agree. Um, you've heard it. You don't need me to tell you 10,000 times. Keep the band chill. Keep the community center. Um, my only idea for the community center would be maybe to have a second story. I, it would, I believe it would be better served to have a basketball court in there. Um, I think the idea of volleyball courts is great on the sand. There's no reason they can't be put north of this, of this pier. Put some courts on the sand. I don't know why we have all that vacant sand and nobody using it. And on the south side of the pier, there's hardly any sand. So please bring some sand back to the beach so that we have room to spread out. There's no room for us. There's rocks all over. When I was a kid, Carlsbad had rocks on their beach. And I thought, who wants to go to a sucky beach like this? And now, <laughs> like a month ago, there's rocks on my beach. I want what I have always had, which is a beautiful community and a beautiful place to raise a family. Um, I know that there are changes. I love some of these changes. I love going down and getting cocktail. I love having a rooftop thing. I don't like looking at the hotels, but they're here. I get it. But I want my city council and I want my government to be a little bit more involved with helping the people of the community. Black and brown people have no place to go. The community center, I played basketball there when I was in junior high. I went to you know, there were events there. When I was in junior high, there were dances there put on by radio stations. There, my prom was held there. You know, there's all these things that you could go to the community center. There were weddings. There were all sorts of things that you can do there. But now it's like, it's not open. It's not accessible. It's so run down. So I get it. We need to renovate these places, but we need to make it usable. And we need places for families. I was just at, oh my bad. Anyway, take care of their people. Thank you. Thank you. So our last set of speakers here are Kareem Pinkston to be followed by Nicole Mersey to be followed by Anthony Wright. Hello, uh, my name is Kareem, just walking off the street. Uh, I understand where everybody's coming from. And so obviously I don't need to beat a dead horse. We already know that the community wants uh, the name to be preserved, the accessibility to be preserved, and of course its purpose to be preserved. Um, and you three people are who? architects, and you all represent the same organization, correct? Which would be the leader if I wanted to speak to one of you? You. What is your purpose and your intention for this entire project? Because I mean, a conversation involves like what we want, you already know that, so what is it that you want? So inform me, so I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And you're based out of Culver City. What is it, what is your investment over here? I mean, like that's a couple of miles away. But what's a, what's a what's what's a, what's in it for you? Every relationship has from huh? Yeah. What's in it for you? Okay, cool. Well, All right, so, so you, you hear where we come from, and 2020 has been a year of change. Know that we are not a quiet community anymore. So as someone said before, we're not going to sit back idly and watch the city get sold out. So I don't have anything to say. People have already spoken. So, you know, I hope you find that middle ground, hope you find that middle ground but just know that nothing's going to change. Like, in terms of the name, accessibility, people aren't going to sit back and just watch like bulldozers come or whatever it is the change is going to be. People are not having it. Just bottom line. This is dude off the street. Talk. Thank you. Um, my name is Nicole. I'm an Oceanside resident of over 35 years, and um, I'm really overjoyed to see all the people that came out tonight as a community to support each other. Uh, my grandfather was the first Samoan hired by the city and worked for NCTD for 20 years. And my family was part of stopping the takeover of Manchester development. We were part of the Main Street because we, we owned Stanky's Pizza downtown from 1999 to 2007. Um, just like everyone else, I played sports at the gym. I participated in the Samoan Sister City Days. Um, I graduated from OHS and amongst many other things as well. Uh, 
I didn't plan on speaking tonight, but um, there was one thing that I noticed that was really important that's missing from this meeting, and that's the city council. I want to uh, give applause for Esther Sanchez for being here to hear us out. Sorry. So, sorry, before I go there, um, I just wanted to say there my main concern to be feasibility of access, access to the facilities um, and then possibility of a second floor, which would allow for ADA access easily to come in from the top and bottom. Um, however, we can say whatever we want. We can be here. We can, we can tell how we feel, our passion. But where are our city council members? So this is how we are not a community without them. If they don't believe in us, what makes us coming here any worth? Yeah, you're an architecture, and we, that's nice that you came, but does Oceanside not have any architect firms? Like, why do we have to outsource everything when we have everything in our own cities? I don't want to look at you guys because you're not city council, because <laughs> where are they? Thank you, Esther, again, for standing behind your community and for always sticking up for us. And um, I appreciate you all. And I hope some of you guys run for city council. And, um, and if you are in District 1, yes, please sign the petition because that's not okay what's happening in our city. And that's all. Thank you. Uh, Anthony Wright? Okay, last call for Anthony Wright. Okay, so our last set of speakers are Shanelle. Oh, you're, you're here? Okay. Hello, I'm not Anthony Wright, I'm Joe Todd. <laughs> And I just wanted to share my little two cents. I'm a local, been here since 83. And I just wanted to share my heart with uh, just the community, the amphitheater, the beach. That's pretty much the city and that's our heartbeat there. It brought all of us together in the same city, together to have fun, to build relationships. A lot of us came from broken down homes and, and but we have to be thankful for people like the pillars in our city that's not even recognizable, like Wayne Godnett. <laughs> Junior Seau was one, even one of them. And even though he was up there, he was on ESPN, he was in the limelight, but he still had love for his community. He still came out and worked out with all the youth in the high schools, try to get them to get to the level that he was at. And just all that that we had, we don't need it to be tear now. It brought everyone together, like I said. It brought unity within, within the community. People from the, the east side, from the valley came together, a whole lot of good fellowship, a lot of stuff taking place, and I don't think it should be gone anyway. Just to keep it real with you guys, this, this is something that we need, this is history. This is something that needs to go on. I heard the world talk about gang violence is going up. Yeah, the community, that's what the community center is for. You guys don't need to tear that down. There's people in there that want to be, that is able and is willing to be able to help out the next generation. Either or, if you, if those, if those buildings or the amphitheater goes out, there's not going to be no more unity. There's not going to be no help within the next generation. And I believe that is a source that needs to stay. Thank you. Thank you. So our final in-person speakers are Shanelle Seau, followed by Nick Carrasco, followed by Dahlia Bonilla. If you come down to the podium and start. Hi, everyone. So I really don't want to reiterate what everyone is saying because we all, as a community, are speaking and talking about the same points. As a recreation major, however, I am going to come from a different standpoint. I understand what you're telling us right now. However, like it has been stated, there's a large opportunity for a lot of changes to occur, especially till 2022. But my question originally from your first presentation is part one just states ongoing. How long have you as the project overseer, foreman, if you will, how long has this been going on? How long have you known about this project to be inquiring, but you're not asking the community until now? Because from your presentation, you've listed various activities. How many of us actually do those things? Like cheerleading, there's places in Vista, yes, but that's where they go because that is where the need is. You haven't asked the community until now 
We are speaking now. The voice of the people is now and no one's here. That's a problem. So right now, as a third generation ocean fighter, I want to know what's going to happen between now, 2022, 2052, and every other years to follow. Because we don't know right now. You don't even know right now. So that in itself is a huge problem for the community of Oceanside. And so with my last seven seconds, since Parks and Rec are supposed to be overseeing this, in the event there's ever an opening, I would like to be informed of this to apply. Howdy. Uh, my name is Nick Carrasco. I am Oceanside born and raised, and I just graduated in 2020. So I may not have gone to Oceanside High, but the graduating class, my class, you know, they, for multiple circumstances, didn't get to walk across that. And that's something that was stripped from them for a multitude of reasons. It happens. It's life. I guess the important thing to look at and to really think about in moving forward is we as a community need to do better. We've only had one person talk about our homeless situation. I'm not gonna call it a problem because it's created not only by us, but by the cities next to us. We are not Carlsbad, we are Oceanside. There is a drastic difference and you can see the change. You can see the point of where South O meets Carlsbad. We do not wanna be Carlsbad. Yes, the hotels have come. We've had plenty of gentrification happen all the way even into the valley. I'm part of it. I work at the hotels that were just put up. I'm, I am actually decent friends with our general manager and he does not wanna change Oceanside. He wants to share it with the rest of the world. And yes, I know that we don't want to bring all these new people here and everything. And I stand by that. I remember Oceanside you know, being able to see the beach and everything. It's lovely, but we need to do better because you guys have had your chance. It's time for my generation to take the reins and have a voice in what's going on. And I guess in closing, part of that is yeah, I mean, where, where is the city council? Where is the notifications? Nobody my age knows what's going on. We need to do better at spreading information. Thank you. Thank you. The final speaker is Dahlia Bonilla. Um, before you start, I would just want to make an announcement. If anybody wants to apply for a board or commissions, um, the city clerk's webpage has applications online. And you can submit them online. Um, if you want to discuss it further, you can uh, talk to me after the meeting. Thank Ms. you. Um, I'm Dahlia. Um, I didn't plan on speaking today, but um, felt compelled. I read it like I feel how everyone feels. Um, and I just kind of want to take the time to say like, um, we have a saying, um, it's O side or no side. So I hope you choose Oceanside side. And if you didn't know, now you know. Thank you. Uh, that concludes all the speakers in person. We're gonna move over to Zoom. Uh, the first speaker on Zoom is going to be Sherry Mackin, followed by Carolyn Kramer, followed by Herlane Hapau. Uh, give me one moment and I'll get you up. And one more thing before everyone leaves, I um, we do have a few more speakers again on Zoom that we would like to hear. Um, and then we will conclude the meeting. I hope you'll stay and hear the rest of the comments. Um, in case you have to leave, um, we appreciate your time. We know your time is important. We appreciate your input. Um, I want to clarify that um, this meeting is a community outreach meeting it's not a it is not it's not a council meeting but i understand your concerns and comments please continue to look at the city webpage on our calendar because we're trying to get out all the information about our upcoming meetings we have several community meetings that we'll be having this is a great start and we really do appreciate all of your comments and feedback and we hope that this continues in the rest of this pro process as a project manager again 
I appreciate your patience with me. I know there was a little bit of a rocky start, but we want to continue this, this positive direction and hear from you. So again, we do have a few more speakers on Zoom um, that we're going to listen to. And if you do have to leave and you still wanted to provide any comments, there are comment cards on the back. Please feel free to fill those out. Two, four, six, I have seven. Seven. We have seven more speakers. Yep. Sherry, if I can get you to unmute. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sherry Mackin. I want to thank the community for coming to this meeting and sharing your stories. That's what makes Oceanside so special. Love for our diversity and sense of place. Thank you, Nancy Craig, for sharing the history of the developer, Doug Manchester, and the attempted takeover of Oceanside in 1998. Thank God for the Coastal Commission and our residents. I'm glad to hear the tone of tonight's meetings changed from the stakeholders meeting I attended a few weeks ago, as well as recognizing some of the events that these two facilities facilitate. It appears that over the weeks you've come around uh, to how important this area is to the community and that we will hold you accountable for your actions. I don't know one person who will say, don't improve the facilities. We've always wanted to see them improve, but for us, I don't believe anyone will argue that they don't need help. I still don't understand why this is not in the hands of the Parks and Recreation Commission. One of my major concerns lies with the classification and facility fee schedule and the priority class and classification groups within that schedule. I do not want to see this property turn into an El Corazon Commercial Park West, rather fall into line where our community comes first. And I do not, do not repeat, do not want any outside operators handling the use of these properties. Remember people, the devil's within the detail. Finally, I'd like to share that I've been assured by the assistant city manager, Jonathan Borrego, that six of those nine view blocking palm trees on Pacific Street and Mission Avenue are going to come out. Excuse me, I have a few seconds left. Um, let me state that history in the past and current use of these uh, properties and 137 parking spaces currently available to the public on the north side of the community center and Betty's lot are super important to our community as well. And what works, current events, including and must be Oceanside High School graduation continue as, long, as well as all the current events and music events. Um, we could, uh, we definitely need updates to technology in both the facilities and keep the use of in the hands of the city, not a separate operator, such as a hotel operator. Thank you. See you to the rest of the meetings. Thank you. Our next speaker is Carolyn Kramer. Carolyn, if I can get you to unmute. I am trying. I can okay. hear you now. Oh, okay, there we go. Uh, Carolyn Kramer, longtime Oceanside resident and um, very good friend of Sherry Mackin. Um, I would like to reiterate what Sherry just said. And yes, these structures are very old, but they are a, a treasured passion of our city, the amphitheater and the Junior Seau Community Center. We all know they need improvements, they need renovation, but they do not need annihilation and destruction. Please keep the public access to the community center and open the damn doors. It doesn't look like it's even being used. Open it to our residents and our families. Also the amphitheater, we know it needs renovation but please keep it under the control of the city of Oceanside and do not let that property become the private use of the hotel and special interest groups. Sherry and I, back in the 90s, formed the Citizens for the Preservation of Parks and Beaches to protect this parkland and to stop Manchester. A lot of you do not even know that history of Manchester who wanted to build and take this parkland, 12 stories, what you see now is six, closing of Pacific Street and the taking of all of this parkland between the Coastal Commission, the residents 
and the Citizens for the Preservation of Parks and Beaches. We stopped that from happening. The city also wanted to pave our beach at the harbor to put in an aquarium. Thanks to the Coastal Commission and the Citizens for the Preservation of Parks and Beaches, this did not happen. So all I can say to you, this community, please be vigilant. Do not trust what you're being told tonight. Please be vigilant and pay attention because what you're being told is not the final version. So pay attention, be vigilant because we cannot lose this. This is our golden treasure. Thank you, have a good night. Thank you. The next, the next speaker is Susie Coker to be followed by John uh, Bontruff to be followed by a name that's Sunny Street Overreach. Susie, if I can get you to unmute. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Great. Um, I appreciate the presentation, um, but please understand the residents have had to deal with backroom deals by our council members, numerous councils, and they even appointed a council member who doesn't even live here. Mm -hmm. So with the accept exception of Esther Sanchez, nobody's had our back. I'd like to see the community center have um, dances for our youth, Friday night dances, Saturday night dances with live bands, local bands from the kids. When I was growing up, every garage had a new band growing up with teenagers in it. So I'd like to see the band shell with uh, summer night concerts, theater like Moonlight and Vista. And I would really like to see you go to the high schools and ask the youth what they want. Ask the kids what they want in their community center. What are they missing? What would they like? And finally, I would like to see a statue of Junior. <laughs> yep. And I would like to see the Sayo family approve it and it be there for all of Oceanside. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, our next speaker is John Baltruff. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing that. John, can you unmute? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Perfect, perfect. So my name is John Baldorf. I'm with Cleaning for Kids and I've been an Oceanside resident for almost 20 years. Uh, the amphitheater and the center are not just a landmark, but they reflect the heart and the soul of Oceanside. They have to be protected and expanded and improved. We need more public spaces for the community and for our kids and our youth to, to play and exercise in a safe environment. They need opportunities and a way to easily get there. We need more trees and natural grass downtown and in these public spaces. All of this should be paid for by raising developer fees, which should be at least the same level as Carlsbad as others have talked about. The hotels can also pay for improvements and other community centers in developing these public spaces. These, these developers and hotels can also help address parking with free electric shuttles, which should serve the beach in downtown areas to reduce traffic and air pollution. Let's make downtown a place for walking and biking. We need services and public spaces for the people of Oceanside, not for developer. This, all this needs to be done for the people of, of Oceanside. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is identified as Sunny Street Outreach. Um, if you could unmute and could you give your name for the record, please? Uh, hello, my name is Sunny Soto and I run Sunny Street Outreach, which is a local mutual aid group here in Oceanside. I am a fourth generation Oceanside local. My grandfather helped rebuild the pier um, and I'm here to, first of all, share in the concern of the community um, you know, we do have distress. We've already sold off so much of this beautiful Luceno land to people that do not put back into our communities. Um, I believe that we all know that we want to improve our downtown area 
um, and, and keep it local. And I'm concerned of why the architects are from Culver City when I'm sure that we have architects here in Oceanside. I hope that they do at least use um, local Oceanside business to help in the improvements and um, outsourcing of any equipment or concrete or anything really that they will be doing. I hope that we keep it local so that the money's still going back into our economy because we have amazing um, Oceanside companies here. We also know that um, the city's a gem, you know, the Strand, the Pier, the Banshell, all this stuff is one of a kind and nobody else in San Diego has these things. We want to make sure that we can keep it accessible to our community at very zero to none. There should not be um, fees for Oceanside High to have their graduation there. There shouldn't be fees for nonprofits to hold benefit concerts there. Um, I would hope that also an ADA area um, at the top, like where Pacific Street is, would be included. Maybe some overseed um, concrete so that wheelchairs and stuff have access, of course. I'd love to see a state-of-the-art sound system, even a big jumbotron, we can do cinema nights. Um, I also, to keep honor of the historic structure itself, we deserve plaques um, to know what the, what the history behind all this is for our community, for the kids learning about this stuff and for tourists coming in to really know what Oceanside is. Um, I also would like to- That's time. All right, thanks, have a good night, y'all. Thank you. Our last two speakers are Brianna Williams to be followed by Era Crenshaw. Brianna, if I can get you to unmute. Can y'all hear me? Yes, we can. Great, hi everyone. My name is Brianna Williams. I'm calling in from South Pacific Street. Basically, I wanted to share that every time I walk past the new hotels and high rises, it makes me so upset. So I'm here on tonight because I won't let the gentrification continue without a fight. I understand the intention of this study is said to be strictly for improvements, but if you haven't gathered, it's very difficult for us locals to trust that there's no hidden agenda when a new face shows up. So I'd like to thank you in advance for keeping your word. But if this improvement effort shifts into something else that is anything but local community serving, please know that Oceanside rolls deep. What you see in that room right now and earlier is nothing compared to the fight we'll put up if there's even a murmur of this improvement effort turning into anything outside of being an improvement effort. So with that said, I think it would be great to keep these facilities uh, free and accessible to locals and Wi-Fi would be cool. And that's it. Thank you. Our final speaker is Era, Era, Era Crenshaw. Crenshaw. Hi, thank you. Um, <laughs> my, so I, I've been a resident of Oceanside for more than 20 years, uh, but I spent the first 20 years of my life um, near Miami Beach, Florida. So I understand what it's like to have tourism be the primary focus for your beach area. And I just wanna remind my, my fellow Oceanside that it, it could be a lot worse than what it is. We don't have to drive for miles and see 20 story hotels that are in between your your Pacific Street and the and the beach. So the fact that we can still drive down Mission and uh, drive down Pacific and, and see our, our water and our pier uh, is a testament to the work that we've done in our city to protect our access. Our access. And it might seem negative to have these new businesses um, and, and all the tourists that comes with it, but the same things that the tourists are looking for are the things that, that we want. We want to have nice restaurants to go eat at. We want to have nice hotels for when our family come to visit. So it's it's not an end uh, end all. So them or us, we 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 can enjoy what the tourists enjoy and and benefit our city. Um, when we talk about what the the consultant was asking, which is what is it that's working? I want to say that um, you know we. We have a, a great amphitheater that has some opportunities to do wonderful things. Unfortunately, it's the idea that's the, the promise of what it's got to offer is, is what we need to take advantage of because what we have there is not working. I've been to a Parks and Rec uh, movie show there and it was a debacle. They, they couldn't get a screen up. There, is, there wasn't any sound. Um, you couldn't sit comfortably. So 
take the amphitheater, take the promise of that amphitheater and build it. Make sure that it's it's got state-of-the-art equipment and it's got um, something that's going to work for multiple types of programming. My daughter goes to surf camp at the uh, the community center. It's a great camp. The facility is not. Build the facility up. I heard somebody mention going two stories. If that's a possibility, do it. Um, go ahead and make it bigger so that we can have more programs, we can have more after school activities, and we can and do more things for our community there. Take into account though the, the traffic flow. So make sure that whatever we build time. okay gives people access to this the place. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes all our speakers on Zoom. Uh, I'd like to point out that the chat feature in Zoom is open right now. If you want to type in some questions or some comments um, into the chat and leave a contact, our project manager will get back to you. We're going to leave the chat open for a while so you can type your questions or comments uh, in the chat room. Thank you all. And again, um, this concludes the community meeting tonight. I do want to say that as the project manager um, and speaking for city staff and our consultants, um, we are listening. I, am, I understand the concerns. I just ask that you give patience with myself, with our consultants, give us an opportunity um, to start this process off with listening to your comments and continuing this process. This is the first of many. And this information is very helpful and we hope that you continue to provide this input as we continue through this process. We have focused meetings coming up regarding recreation and sports, the cultural festivities, but we also are ultimately going to get to the phase where we wanna talk about what the potential improvements are. We've touched on some of them tonight, but again, this is a continuing process. So we will put the dates for those upcoming meetings on the website and we really hope that you do do continue this public participation because it is appreciated. So thank you all for coming tonight. I really appreciate it. Okay, so we did, when did you apply? Um, Was it a while ago? Yeah. Okay, so we streamlined it and it's all on our webpage. And thank you for doing that because it, it allows me to, uh, um, let people know that we're accepting applications.
Thank you. 